So, good evening, everyone. We are the Dreamboats, and in 187 days, we will set off to row across the Atlantic Ocean. 50 days at sea, up to 30-foot waves, 600 hours each rowing, two hours on, two hours off, 24 hours a day. This is the world's toughest race. The first lunatic to row the Atlantic was Frank Samuelson and George uh, Hubbo in 1896, and they rowed from New York to the Isles of Scilly in 55 days. The sport and boats have come a long way since then, but fewer than 1,000 people have ever rowed an ocean. More people have been to space or climbed Everest. The Talisker Whiskey Challenge is an unaided, completely unsupported rowing race from La Gomera in the Canary Islands all the way to Antigua in the Caribbean. That's 3,000 nautical miles. Or to put it into perspective, it would be the same as taking a boat from LA, rowing it all the way to Charleston, and then turning right and rowing all the way down to Miami. That sounds tiring on a plane. So how did we get here? Well, like all good English stories, we started down the pub. The pub in question was the Ferryboat Inn in Helford Passage in the depths of Cornwall. It's an iconic 17th century pub that Ben's brother Alex owns and that I was the head chef at. I can barely recognize the guy behind me. Honestly, I was living the pub lifestyle of beers, kebabs, and cigarettes anytime I could. I could probably barely row across a puddle, let alone the Atlantic Ocean. I knew I needed to make some changes so where does one go to kickstart a healthy lifestyle? Probably the home of barbecue, fried chicken, shrimp and grits, Charleston, South Carolina. I landed in 2018 to work at Basic Kitchen and I was given Peggy the company car. I started riding this bike everywhere. I started with 10 miles, then 20 miles. I was up to 100 plus miles a week. I was living better and working better and through work eating better with a new approach to food. I can't believe we've actually got this far, and I haven't done what all vegans do. I'm vegan. <laughs> We're a little bit annoying sometimes. <laughs> this was really down to helming Hit Basic Kitchen and running the plant-based challenge, which we do every year in January. Since moving to Charleston, I've lost 130 pounds, and I'm in the best physical and mental strength I've ever been in. For me, the proof's in the plants. So, uh, it's amazing. So I'm, um, I'm Ben, I'm a father of two, I'm the co-owner of Basic Projects, and the last time I stood on this stage, um, I'd just ridden my bike across the US. Um, so for me, uh, a beach holiday is not what gets me going, and as my wife reminds me daily, I'm a very intense individual. Sorry, sorry, Charlie. So how do you go from running restaurants to rowing oceans? You sit down uh, for a company review with the head chef, and you ask him, where do you see yourself in two years? And he surprisingly answers, rowing the Atlantic. A light bulb goes off. You found another madman. The Dreamboat Project was born. So uh, Charlie and I had zero rowing experience when we started this. We found a local legend, Rando Blythe, through the Charleston Rowing Club. I rang him up and I told him we want to row the Atlantic. And he said, I've been waiting my whole life for this phone call. So that was the perfect fit. So once we got comfortable on the water, we realized quickly that we needed a boat. Enter Polly Ann. She was specially built in the UK and is a true Essex girl. She's the third member of our team and she's named after our grandmothers and she is an absolute beauty. I think everyone in this room can agree that the most boring thing you can do in a gym is sit on a rowing machine. It's mind numbing, honestly. When we started, we couldn't do 12 minutes. Now we do two hours at a minimum. And to top it all off, we had to get mentally strong, so we decided to walk the height of Everest for 36 hours with no sleep to see if we would kill each other at the end. And luckily, we're still here today. <laughs> they say the hardest thing in ocean rowing is actually getting to the start line. It's going to cost us around $200,000 to be fully equipped, get our boat from England to Charleston, and then back to Lagomera with all our gear and supplies. We're so lucky that we've had some amazing sponsors join our team. And none of this would be possible without them. When Pollyanne arrived in the US, she looked a bit more like a British, British beachgoer with a very English tan. <laughs> with the help of our friend and graphic wizard, Blake Suarez, we managed to get her some new threads. And here's Pollyanne, dressed to the nines with all our sponsors and all their logos on it. You can notice, though, there's quite a lot of space left on her. <laughs> so we have this big, beautiful, shiny boat. 
and we have no idea what to do with it. We've got all the gear and no idea. Enter ocean rowing legend, world record holder, Duncan Roy. Dunk has rowed the Atlantic and the Pacific, and we spent six very intense days with him, learning all the skills and drills you need to row an ocean. Lots of 2 a.m. starts, not a lot of sleep. We get asked three questions the most whenever we do talks. What do you do in a storm? Where do you eat? And where do you go to the toilet? So I'm going to answer them. You put out a parachute anchor, and you get really cozy together in a tiny cabin. You eat freeze-dried food, 6,000 calories a day, and snacks galore. And the facilities, although en suite, are a bucket, and there's no door. So why are we doing this? I ask myself that a lot. Luckily, we are doing this to raise $300,000 for the Green Hut Project based here in Charleston. The Green Hut Project go into public schools and they build urban farms to get kids out of the conventional classroom and get them hands-on learning about food and where it's from and the effect it has on us and our environment. With the funds we're raising, we're aiming to make Green Hut the standard bearer for outdoor education in the whole of the United States. We want to help them inspire the kids and teach them how important it is to grow food, to celebrate food, and most of all, to know where it's from. It takes a village, and we've got the most epic team of volunteers and supporters helping us across the Atlantic. From logistics, fundraising, safety at sea, physical and mental preparation, family duties with kids, the list goes on and on and on. So to everyone who's helping us, thank you. This is an all-consuming project, and we wouldn't be here without you. So please, please follow along, spread the word, help us raise the funds, and thank you so, so much. Thank you.